Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing really well. So today I am back to talk about the books that I read in the second half of October. These were some of the books that I finished in the latter half of my holiday. So yeah, without much further ado, let's just get right into these books because I know that I tend to ramble on quite a lot at the beginning of these wrap ups. Let's see if we can try and break that habit. First off, we have The Emperor's Babe by Bernadine Evaristo. Bernadine Evaristo, as you might already know, was the author of Girl, Woman, Other and also Mr. Loverman, which was one of my favourite books of last year. So I was really intrigued to read this because this is actually more of a historical fiction from her and I wanted to see how she would write that. So this is actually set in Roman occupied Britain in Londinium in AD 211 and we are following the main character of Zulika who is married off as a teenager to an older man and it is recounting her experiences as a teenage bride, the daily goings on of her life, her interactions with her different friends who are also in similar situations, her kind of self-discovery journey as a poet who cannot actually express her skill but also how her life takes a sharp turn after she engages in an affair with the Emperor Septimus. This was a really interesting book. Definitely a very different one, at least for what I've read of Bernadine Evaristo so far. Because the character of Zulika is herself a poet, the book is written in verse. It is all set out as couplets. And that was a really interesting writing decision. There are also occasional moments where Zulika will include her own poems. But like I say, the main bulk of the story is that couplet form. Everything in here is definitely modernised in terms of language. And that is kind of to bring this into the modern day and kind of make it relatable and relevant. I definitely wouldn't call this this an uplifting book at all. This definitely can get quite bleak at times, as you might imagine from the subject matter. It's a really interesting look into womanhood in this time period and the limitations that a young teenage bride would have felt. Uh, but definitely, like I say, quite bleak. But makes me interested to read even more Bernadine Evaristo in the future. I think I've definitely got my eye on Blonde Roots. But do let me know your other Bernadine Evaristo recommendations. The next book that I have on hand to show you is The Mothers by Brooke Bennett. I had previously read The Vanishing Half by her last year, which was also really, really popular. Popular. That book had received so much buzz and attention. So I wanted to get back to, I think this was her debut book, her debut novel. And this is all about the after effects of an affair between the young 17 year old Nadia Turner and the 21 year old pastor's son, Luke Shepard. They have an affair over the summer, it results in a pregnancy. And this is all about the ramifications of Nadia's decision to terminate that pregnancy and the effects that that had on the different people of the town. But it goes into so much detail, not just about that decision, but also the way that this community does and does not come to Together under different circumstances. We see so many communities in here that do not act like communities. Brit Bennett makes it very clear that one of the reasons that Nadia turns to Luke is because she is deeply grieving her mother's suicide and that she has nobody else to turn to. And where was this community during this time? The ways in which the community around her was not sure what to do with her, especially because of the way that her mother had died and didn't know how much support to give her and really how this society was really failing everybody involved. I thought this was told in a really interesting manner because the first couple of pages of each chapter will be told from the perspective of the mothers who are these older women of the local church and then we'll quickly revert back to the story of Luke and Nadia but you've got this sense that this community of mothers is always watching everything that is going on. It's a really interesting insight into gossip culture and the ways in which people always want to be in each other's business but not always for the right reasons. One of the things that I was worried about with picking this up was the stance on Nadia's decision to get an abortion and what Brit Bennett was kind of going to come down on because of the fact that this is taking place in a very religious community, in a community that very much see this as a bad thing, but Nadia herself knows that this was the right decision for her. And I was just kind of concerned about how sensitive Brit Bennett was going to be about that decision. But I think she was very acutely aware of the sensitivity, that we should definitely respect Nadia's choice. And that even though she is depicting characters who are very against this decision, that is not the stance that she comes down on. And she can respect the opinions of other people and see how it was that they came to such a stance. But Brit Bennett as an author stands very firm on the fact that the choice was important, that it was a good thing for Nadia to have that decision there for her and not for it to be taken away from her. I think this was definitely one of my favourite books that I read during the holiday and I definitely recommend this one. I even think I might slightly prefer it to The Vanishing Half but it's not really a competition. The next book that I read was The Girl Who Reads on the Metro by Christina Ferre Fleury. This was translated from the original French and tells the story of a young woman living in Paris who ends up being brought into this secret society who try and give books out to the right person at the right time. And that seems like such an interesting premise but for me personally I, I I didn't really enjoy it that much. I didn't think it was as special as the premise suggested. This book was a lot of philosophizing on the importance of books, of finding the right book for the right person, what books people read say about them and there are a lot of great little pull quotes in there that you can take for the importance of reading but ultimately the book itself is really flat and very unfocused I would say. I found this whole idea of the society very confusing and I feel like there are some sort of magical realism aspects to this society that we're trying to come through 
through that I just didn't understand and were not made very clear. Honestly, I feel like this is a book that would pull in a lot of people because of this title and this excitement about reading a book about somebody who is a reader, who enjoys sending books out to people, but actually the book itself is really flat and dull. And then the last book I have to talk to you about today is Hurdy Gurdy by Christopher Wilson. This was a comic take on the Black Death, telling the story of a young monk called Brother Diggory, who is living in 1349, lives in quite a comically strict monastery, one that is not particularly respected and does not have many members, but he is very fervently dedicated to it. But then disaster strikes and the Black Death comes to England. Brother Diggory ends up contracting the Black Death, but then survives it and discovers that he is the only sole survivor of the monastery. Everybody else has come down with the Black Death and died. And then he then has to go out into society and try and navigate this new world. And he starts to come out of this cloistered existence and learn more about human experience. I feel like if you're a fan of things like Monty Python, this might be one that you'd be interested in. Personally, I found this to be like a weird fever dream of a book, which might be very apt considering the subject matter. But it was just a very bizarre one where I felt like what I had been offered, which was this very funny comedic take on the Black Death, didn't really come through. I felt like there was the odd funny line here and there, but it wasn't like a hilarious book in itself. I thought there might be some interesting insight into living with a pandemic and something that I could take for today, but really, no, not really. I suppose if anything, there's this message of we always think that we have the answer and in fact, we have to come to terms with the fact that we don't. But I don't think that was a very strong theme throughout the book. I think the main pull for this is the fact that the main character is such, not a blank slate, but he is very innocent. He's very naive and it's him learning more about life. And that's interesting and comedic in itself because that time of your life is very comedic when so you can step back and look at it with adult eyes. But aside from that, I'm not sure how much I would say that this is one that I would recommend. But you know, an interesting historical fiction, very different to what I've previously read. So there we go, those are all of the books that I read in the second half of October. Do let me know if you've read any of the books that I've spoken about today and let me know about anything that you read in October. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, bye!